we praise you tonight. Only by no suit Amen. Hallelujah. Tonight, we're going to be praying. If you look around, we have a few people that are not feeling well. All right. And so we're going to lift up our brothers and sisters. I want to read to us Galatians 6, 17. He says, from now on, let no one trouble me, for I bear in my body the marks of the Lord Jesus Christ. This scripture, one time my husband wasn't feeling well. He had a lot of attacks. I had a dream at night and the Lord showed me different people. You know, he, he did deliverance for someone. And Satan came for him. Like, how dare you do this deliverance for this person? And he was down. And the Lord showed me all the stones that they were throwing at him. And the Lord gave me this scripture. The Lord said, pray this scripture over your husband. Lay your hands over him and pray the scripture. This was why I have a testimony from this scripture. I want you to believe it. That you are going to be calling the names of your loved ones. Even if you are sick and you are here. You are going to be calling their names. And say from this minute. He says let no one trouble me. For I bear in my body the marks of our Lord Jesus Christ. And so when you have the marks of our Lord Jesus Christ. Sickness cannot stay in your body. When you have the marks of our Lord Jesus Christ. Infirmity cannot stay in your body. When I started to pray over my husband I tell you by afternoon by 12 p.m. he got up he started to eat he couldn't eat before he couldn't move his body and so tonight I want you to lift up your voice and begin to pray begin to call your brothers and sisters and say father I bring my brothers and sisters before you tonight the bear the marks of our Lord Jesus Christ no sickness no sickness will dwell in your body in the mighty name of Jesus father Lord you are Jehovah Rapha, you are a good, good father. My Kalamo, call the other Sutho, Mani Kalu Sutu, Hesa Salamanosa, Mane Kalamo Kusasa. Father, Lord, thank you. Lord, we give you praise. Father, we exalt you tonight. In Jesus' mighty name, Amen. Amen. Tonight, I'm going to be sharing, I'm bringing the word tonight. Before we pray, I want to read to us Acts 6 verse 4. It says, we will give ourselves continually to prayer and to the ministry of the word. It is good as commanded by Jesus that we should pray. But we need the ministry of the word. Because the word of God says, he sent his word and he healed them and he delivered them. All right, and as much as we need the prayers, we need the word. So you ask the Lord tonight, say, Father, give me a word. Give me a word that will change my situation. Give me a word that will transform my life. Give me a word that will move me to another level. Give me a word. Let me not miss my visitation tonight. Let me not miss my visitation. Malika lose Italian. Father Lord, give me that word. I am asking Lord, let me not miss. Let me not miss that word. In the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, we thank you. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen. All right, you may take your seat. The children can go to the... Thank you. Thank you, Ben. Thank you guys very much. (laughs) 
2 Kings chapter 4. Tonight we want to talk about the Shunammite woman. Oh yeah, it's one of, anyway, all the stories in the Bible you know by now. <laughs> it's my favorite, you know, when I read the word of God. I always ask, Lord, Father, give me a revelation of your word. Give me a word that I can, I can apply to my life. A word that is now. And so, this is one of them. And it says, let's start reading 2 Kings chapter 4. We start from verse 8. Now, <laughs> it happened one day that Elisha went to Shunem where there was a notable woman and she persuaded him to eat some food. So it was, as often as he passed by, he would turn in there to eat some food. And she said to her husband, Look now, I know that this is a holy man of God who passes by us regularly. Please, let us make a small upper room on the wall and let us put a bed for him there and a table and a chair and a lampstand and so it will be. Whenever he comes to us, he can turn in there. And it happened one day that he came there and he turned into the upper room and laid down there. Then he said to Gehazi, his servant, no, before I get to verse 12. When you look at this Shunammite woman, whether you are a man or a woman, I want you to know that as soon as you accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior, you have received the gift of the Holy Spirit. Jesus said, as I'm going, I will leave you a helper that will comfort you, that will help you, that will guide you. So you have the Holy Spirit inside of you. And so when you look at this Shunammite woman, she was kind to a stranger. That's what the word of God is telling us. He said, be kind to strangers. Perventure, you entertain angels. And so this Shunammite woman, she looked and she was sensitive. This is, all, this is how we have to be as children of God. We have to be sensitive to the needs of those around us. Just when Mary uh, was at the wedding, the wedding at Cana, and, um, and the wine finished, and Mary got up. It didn't tell us the couple knew what was happening. Mary got up, and she went to Jesus, and she said, Jesus, the wine is finished. And Jesus is like, what has that got to do with me, woman? You see? And Mary was like, it, she turned to the servant and said, whatever he tells you to do, just do it. Mary acted as an intercessor. And that's the same thing the Shunammite woman did here. She looked at the, at, at the prophet Elisha. She recognized the fact that this man, he's always coming here. Let's make, let's make room for him. Let's make him comfortable. Let's be sensitive. Let's see what does he need. This is how we have to be as children of God. Wherever you find yourself in people's lives, look around you. You'll see someone and you look at them. You can tell they're not looking happy today. You can see how they're looking. You look, oh, girl, what's wrong? Ask them questions. You know, we've come to a culture now like, oh, me, myself, and I. That's the trinity of Satan. It's all about you, you, you. What about the one that was created in the image and in the likeness of God? And so this woman, she looked, she said, no, this man needs something. Especially, this is why I always encourage men, get married. Because if you are blind, your helper can help you. The woman was sensitive. The woman went to her husband and she said, this man needs a room. Let's make room for him. Some of us tonight, 
God needs a room in your heart. Let's make room for God. We have to be sensitive. We have to come to a point when we are sensitive. We are discerning to the needs of people around us. You are at work. Be a blessing. At work. You can see your colleagues. They come in. They are always cursing. You know they have a problem. You know they are not happy. Instead of gossiping about them, why don't you tell them about the Savior? Why don't you go and listen to them? Some people just need a listening here. I was listening to a man of God today. He said he was going through things during the time of COVID and he lost a lot of money. He said, all I needed was someone to just be there. Just sit down and be looking at me. That was all he needed. And blessed be the name of the Lord, he had those people come. He just came, the sat there with him. And so this Shunammite woman, she recognized the five words. No, this person needs something. Just when it comes to kingdom service. You guys know I'm big on kingdom service. You look around in church. What does your church need that you can help with? What does your church need? You don't, nobody needs to come and ask you. Some people, they want people to come and ask them before they can serve. Except the Lord is leading Rosemary. I don't ask nobody. Trust me. Some people would ask you, but I won't ask you. You see, because you are in your father's house. You don't need an invitation in your own house to clean your house. You don't need anyone to tell you, pick up the trash on your floor. And some people will see trash on the floor, they walk past it. This is your father's house. You don't need to be reminded about kingdom service. This is how we have to be sensitive. Like, what do, what's going on in the children's department? What do they need here? How can I be of help? You will see this woman. What happened to her because of the thing that she did? Because she made room for the, for the prophets. And the prophets here could mean anything. It could mean your man of God. The prophet here, it could mean the need of a church. It could mean the need in a family. It could mean, you know, some of us, you see some people post on, on Facebook and say they need something. And you just scroll past it. Like you didn't see it. As children of God, we need to do better. We need to look after our own. That's the word, the word of God says. And in verse 11, no verse, and it, it happened one day that it came there and it turned into the upper room and lay down there. They made him comfortable. You see, many a times people want to be good to the ones that are good to them. They want to love the ones that love them. And you know what this word of God says? He said, what is that to you? What credit is that? I've seen people say, oh, I only love the people who love me. The energy you give me, I give you. <laughs> and I'm like, I pray Jesus doesn't answer you like that. Because what you sow is what you reap. Oh, you only give you, give me that energy, I give it back to you. You are not a believer. Let's read it. In Luke chapter 6. In Luke chapter 6. Verse 32. But if you love those who love you, what credit is that to you? <laughs> For even sinners love those who love them. If you go, in verse 33, and if you do good to those who do good to you, what credit is that to you? For evil sinners do the same. Amen? You see, we have to be the remnants. We are the light of the world. That we have to be different. And these are the things I teach my children. Don't go to school and be having cliques. Oh, this one is my friend. And then you guys in that, your clique, you want to start to bully other kids. No. You are the light of the world. Don't do that. 
What is that to you? If you love those who love you. For even sinners do that. So you are no different from a sinner. You just have to repent and accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior. These are the things, these are the ways you begin to judge yourself. Like, okay, I have accepted Jesus as my Lord and Savior. What has happened? What, has the, what is the transformation? What is the evidence of that? That you have accepted Jesus as your Lord and Savior. These are the things. For if you do good to those who do good to you, you are no different. You are no different at all. And so, so when we are doing good to, pe- when we are doing good to people, don't expect the same people to bless you. These are the things that when people are doing good, they want to assess, oh, can she pay me back? That's when I can do good to her. You see, can she, can, you know, oh, if I want to serve in church, oh, can the pastor see me that I'm serving? We used to have those people here at Communion House. When they see Pastor Moses coming, that's when they run. That's when they begin to pretend like they are serving God. That they want him to see them doing it. Whatever you do, listen, it is to God. Whatever service you do, it is to God. Not even at church alone. Even in your own home. Whatever service you give, it is to God. Many of us, you know, if your spouse doesn't give you that energy, you give it to them. You've turned your home into a war zone. Some people's home is even court room. They want to begin to judge. You want to judge your spouse. Oh, you haven't done this. I'm not doing that. Oh, I'm not doing your laundry this week. Because you haven't been good to me. You are a sinner. Yeah, the, I didn't say it. The word of God said it. Amen? And so, when we, when we are doing good, when we are offering our services to, to the people around us, this is why we've been called to serve. Many a times when I see people that want to be a leader, a leader serves. A leader is not to lord over people. A leader is not a title. Prophetess Rosemary... Anderson, prophetess, doctor. What are those titles again? Help me out. (laughs) You see, that's not a leader. A leader, you see me, I'm serving. The same way you are a child of God, I'm also a child of God. And there is hierarchy in 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 the kingdom of God. I get it. But guess what? We are all serving. Nobody's lording over anyone. You serve, I serve. If you can't wash the toilets, why do you want to take the microphone? Yeah, because I, we, I'm telling you, communion house, we've been through a lot of stages. People wanted the microphone. They want to be here lying. God showed me this prophecy and God didn't show them nothing. But they just want, oh, pastor, I want to share with people. Because, you know, here, the Lord has called us. That anyone that comes into communion house, that will be the least that you will be. For in three months, if you come to communion house and your lives have not changed, I challenge you. Trust me. When you come here, your life will be transformed in three months, spiritually. Because you will get the word here. You will get prayer. You will begin to walk in your calling. And so... And then they will come. Oh, pastor, the Lord is showing me something. How can you be lying to a prophet? (laughs) People don't think that. How can you be lying to a prophet? When you lie to me, I just walk away like I didn't hear you. But you know, Pastor Moses is Mr. Merciful. He will be there smiling and looking at you. You'll be like, mm, okay. You say, oh, Pastor, but I need to share it. I want to tell the people what God... It's like, not now. He will just tell them, not now. But when you ask the same people, can you clean up? Can you wipe these tables? 
then they pick grace. They don't want to do that. They don't want to clean up after their brothers and sisters. They don't want to tidy up, but they want the microphone. How can you have the microphone when you don't want to start from the back? Say, mercy, Lord. Colossians 3, verse 23. And whatever you do, do it utterly as to the Lord and not to men. Whatever you do in your home, in your business, whatever you do at school, you do it to the Lord. It's not to men. You know why? My favorite word, I cannot repay you. Men are limited in their resources. A man can give you health insurance. He cannot give you health assurance. That's what the man can do to you. They can give you what you can see, material things. They cannot give you long life. They can give you IVF. They cannot give you the babies. This is why whatever you do, you do it to the Lord. It is the Lord that can repay you. We are going to read this Shunammite woman, how the Lord repaid her. Look what it says here. Verse 24, he says, knowing that from the Lord, you will receive the reward of the inheritance. You will receive the reward of the inheritance. For you serve the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. And so, whatever you're doing, you're serving your children. Not to your children. Not to the men. You're doing it to the Lord. Because why? He is the one that will give you the reward of inheritance. Many a times I see people, they're waiting on their children to, to oh, I, I love my child. Let my child love me back. <laughs> Teenagers of these days, you better follow it with prayers. Because the more you do it, the more you are expecting it, the more they are drawing it from you like, I'm not going to tell her. I'm not going to tell her. But you, when you surrender it to God, and say, so whatever I do, I do it for the Lord. I'm not expecting man to reward me because man is limited in resources. You don't even know what God will reward you with. You don't even know how your reward is going to come. If you want me to reward you, what can I give you? $20 or $200? You, that will go so quick. What if the Lord rewards you with prosperity? What if the Lord rewards you with favor that wherever you go, people just love you and they begin to favor you? Whatever you do, but make sure you are doing something. Some of us are not doing anything. Some of us, is just all about us. Pray, say, mercy, Lord. Help me with the spirit of selfishness. Take it away from me. And some people, they have been hurt. Some people will tell me, oh, I don't know how you guys do it. I don't deal with church people. I say, you don't need to deal with me. Because I'm also a church people. You know, I'm a church person. But you know when they say, I don't deal with church people. They've hurt me so much. I'm like, ah, do you go to work? Have they ever offended you at work? Yeah. And you're going back there. And you're going back to work. But your brothers and sisters offend you. Boom! You leave the church. You keep jumping from one church to another. You lack consistency. Mercy, Lord. Amen. Because when people keep saying, Oh, I don't deal with church people. Who do you want to deal with? It is from here that we learn how to go and deal with outsiders. Yes, we will offend one another. We are not perfect here. Right? When people offend you here, you learn to deal with them like Jesus recommended. Go to your brother if you've offended you. Go to your brother and sort it out. Not to be gossiping. And go to, oh, look what she did to me. I'll ask you, have you, been, have you told her before coming to me? Because I'm not killing anybody for you. 
Yeah, go, go, to, go to your brother and sister. And so, in 2 Kings 4, verse 12, Then he said to Gehazi, his servant, Call this Shunammite woman. When he had called her, she stood before him. And he said to him, Say now to her, Look, you have been concerned for me. You have been concerned for us with all this care. What can I do for you? Do you want me to speak on your behalf to the king or to the commander of the army? You see, some blessings are provoked. They are not said. There are some things that you would do for God. God will say, what can I do for you? Remember Solomon. Solomon offered a thousand burnt offerings. The Lord said, Solomon, what do you want? See, this is how I want to get to that point that God will come to me and say, Rosemary, what do you want? One time, I, I've shared it many times. I prayed for my husband for five years. I didn't pray for myself. I was praying. One day, my husband came to me and said, Rosemary, God said it's enough. I said, ah, I'm praying for you. Are you sure? He said, no, I'm serious. God said he has heard you. You want to get to a point that your service will speak for you. That God himself will come down and say, what do you want? You want to get to a point that you will praise God with everything inside of you. And God himself will say, what do you want? You want to thank him so much that God himself will say, what do you want? That means God will be so pleased with your service. He will be so pleased with your praises and your thanksgiving. I've shared here before an illustration that one of my mentors shared with us. A woman, God was sitting here. And a woman was coming to God. And she was complaining. Oh God, I'm, I'm grumbling. I've been praying. You haven't answered me. Oh God, what are you doing? And she was complaining and whining. Coming into the presence of God. And God said to the angels, give her patience. Another time she complained. God said, give her endurance. <laughs> Another time she came complaining about her colleagues. Do you know some people, that's their ministry. Ministry of complaint. Anytime you meet them, how are you? Oh, I'm tired. Oh, I've had a bad day. Every time you meet them, oh, they are so, they always grumble. They have nothing good to say. Life, life is good. There are times when you'll be tired, but come on, you can't be tired all the time. Excuse me, if you want to be honest with yourself. And so this woman, as she was coming and she was complaining, God was giving her patience, endurance. This is what you need. Self-control. <laughs> the Lord was giving her. But there was another woman. Despite all she was going through, she was coming and saying, Kali Malusasa. She was praising God. She was saying, you are a good, good father. My God, my king, my savior. Hey, Kali Malusasa. She was praising God. And God said, long life, go with her. As she was praising God, God said, goodness and mercy, go with her. As she was coming, praising God and thanking God, God said, prosperity, go with her. And she continued, despite God was giving her, she continued to praise God. And God said, even I will go with her. God himself got up and went with her. Why? She came into the presence of God with praises and thanksgiving. This is what I'm saying to us tonight. That some blessings are not said. They are provoked. You know, sometimes when I bless my mom, when she's not expecting it, she just begins to pour out her heart and blessing me. I have provoked a blessing. If my mom didn't say anything... The book of Ephesians already said it. 
that it will be well with me and my days will be long when I honor my mother and my father. But when I now even do it and my mom is like blessing me from her soul, she is blessing me from the depth of her heart, I have provoked a blessing. This is why I always encourage people, don't let your children dishonor you. It will not be well with them. It's the word of God. If your children don't honor you, it will not be well with them. And their days will be, will be cut short. This is why we have to teach our children. As soon as they are dishonoring you, disrespecting you, tell them. You don't want to die early. That's the word of God. And so, what, let's read on. 2 Kings 4. When he had called her, she stood before him. And he said to her, say now to her, look, you have been concerned for us with all this care. What can I do for you? <laughs> do you want me to speak on your behalf to the king or to the commander of the army? She answered, I dwell among my own people. So he said, what then is to be done for her? <laughs> and Gehazi answered, actually, she has no son. And her husband is old. I pray that you will have someone that will speak on your behalf. I pray that you, will, you yourself, you will speak on behalf of somebody. Tonight, I hope you are writing them down. Because I am bringing out prayer points. That you will speak on behalf of someone. They don't even know if they have that need. You will bring them before the Lord tonight because we are going to be praying. You know, when I lead, it's prayer. Amen? And Gehazi answered, actually she has no son. And her husband is old. So he said, call her. When he had called her, she stood in the doorway. Then he said, hmm. About this time next year, you shall embrace a son. About this time next year, you shall embrace a son. <laughs> and she said, no man, Lord, man of God, do not lie to your maid son. You see, the blessings that God wants to give us tonight is unbelievable blessings. Unbelievable blessings. You see, the promises of God said we will have exceedingly and abundantly all that we ask for. The woman said, oh, man of God, don't lie to me. Like, are you sure? Are you sure that I'm going to receive my healing? Are you sure? You, you know you are beginning to question the promises of God in your life. Listen, tonight God will blow your mind. Tonight is the night that you want to write your, 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 your prayer request down. And you are going to come back and testify. The woman said, man of God, don't lie to me. I want to say something as well. See this woman. You can see how much she was honoring this man of God. What is lacking in our generation. We don't know how to honor people. We don't know how to honor our men of God. You know? One time, some people just say, Moses. I say, Pastor Moses. Some people say, oh, Moses said this. Pastor Moses. This is it. We don't know how to honor. Man of God. She first of all said, no, my Lord. Then she went to say, man of God. We have to learn how to honor people. We have to learn how to, when we come and you see someone that carries anointing. Because you know, people say, hey, he can pray, I can pray. Oh, he's a prophet, I'm a prophet. You are not a prophet, liar. Yeah, you are not a prophet. What have you prophesied? What have you seen? You give word of encouragement. And you call that one, hey, I'm a prophet. You know, someone, someone said, oh, oh, Lady Rose, I want my prophet to pray for you. I said, oh, 
okay, you know. We know in parts and we prophesy in parts. So I'm like, let me just humble myself. Let your prophet pray for me. And the prophet on the phone, this was on the phone after service, you know. And the person was on the phone. He said, oh, woman of God. Oh, I see the Lord taking you to a new level. I'm like, "Mm mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And then he was like, oh, you know, when you go through fire, the Lord will be with you. I was like, is that a prophetic word or word of knowledge? Which one? You see, because some people, they are not prophets. They just mask themselves as that. And so... This is why you have to have your own relationship with the Lord. You see, as he was talking, I was like, hmm, it didn't finish. The phone cut off. You would think he was calling me from Nigeria. No, he was actually calling me from Lawrenceville, and I was in Sugar Hill. I've never seen, oh, the network went bad. I was like, oh, call, call him back. Let him finish what he was saying. Oh, he didn't pick up. I was like, uh-oh. Your prophets didn't pick up. But he had a word for me, so what's going to happen? He never called back. You see, some of you, you don't need to be looking for prophets. If you're a member of communion house, this one, she's, she's a member of communion house. But some people, they like to go here and there and collect here and there. And people will be lying to you. You go into some halters that their halter is filled with lies. And then you wonder where your battles are coming from. Because you won't stay still. If you are here, stay here. Let your heart be single. Amen. Amen. And so, in verse 16, and he said, About this time next year, you shall embrace the son. And she said, No, my Lord, man of God, do not lie to your maidservants. But the woman conceived and bore a son when the appointed time had come, of which Elisha had told her. I want you to lift your hands. Eyes closed. Father, every prophecy consigned me. It will come to pass in the name of Jesus. Just like this Shunammite woman, she experienced, she experienced this. Father, Lord, every prophecy concerning me, concerning my husband, my children, concerning communion house, it will come to pass in the name of Jesus. I receive it, Lord, in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. See, the word of God does not lie. The word of God does not lie. The Lord said to me today, tell your brothers and sisters, I am too faithful to fail. I am so faithful to fail. There is a song that happened. This morning, I've just been playing that song. I am too faithful to fail. It is too faithful to fail you. See, but the woman conceived and she bore a son according to what the prophets are prophesied. <laughs> and the child grew. Hmm. It's getting interesting. Now it happened one day that he went out to his father, to the reapers, and he said to his father, My head, my head. <laughs> so he said to his servant, Carry him to his mother. When he had taken him and brought him to his mother, he sat on her knees till noon and then died. Mm. Fathers, where are the fathers? Say to any man next to you, where is your brother? Where is your brother? I want to call on the men tonight. I know we women, by nature, we encourage one another. We send out invitation. Men, you have to start bringing your friends, your brothers to church. You have to start calling them and encouraging them. I say, bro, let's go to church. Let's get into the presence of God. The men at communion house, they meet Mondays at 7 o'clock. Start sending those invitations out to men. 
Don't keep quiet. Look at this one. A son that you've prayed, a son that you didn't even know you would have. The Lord blessed you with a son. And the son came to you. Dad, I have a headache. Go to your mother. Mm -hmm. You can't even lay hands on your child and say, you have a headache. It is well with you. This sickness, be gone. Where are the fathers? Where are the gyruses? You go to church where women are packed in church, but the men are trying to figure it out. Why are you suffering when the Lord is ready to help you? Where are the fathers? I want to encourage the men here. The men here, blessed be the name of the Lord, they are fantastic. I, I brag on them any day. You will see the men here, they go on their knees, they worship God, they lay down, they praise God. Letting their children know, there is somebody higher than me. The men here, but I need them to go a step further. I need you men to inv invite your friends. I need you to invite your brothers. So many children are dying. They too of children going back to school. Are the kids here? No kids. Day two of children going back, to, going back to school. A third grader said to his classmates, I want to eat your pee. I want to eat your pee. I, don't, I can't even say the full word. How disgusting is that? Where are the men? Children get their identity from their father. They don't have my last name. They have your last name. Because they get their identity from their father. Where are the men? You are doing good, but what about your friends? What about your brothers? You don't want to bother them. But they call you, let's go and hang out. Hang out for what? Children are dying. Look at how many girls are losing their identity. They don't know who they are. Girls are becoming lesbians. One of one fake prophets that we used to have, that called himself a prophet here. His children are becoming lesbians. But he wants the microphone. It starts from your household. Call your children. We are praying tonight. Oh, we are fasting tonight. Let men be men. Let the men begin to lead their household. It's not every time the women are praying. What about the men? The blessings of a father. You will see it. Abraham blessed his children. Isaac blessed his children. Jacob blessed his children. Men. I'm challenging you tonight. Next week, bring your friends. If you don't bring your friend, you're staying outside. <laughs> okay. <laughs> you know, your pastor is Mr. Merciful. I call him that. <laughs> you see? But I'm serious. We, we have to start. Because imagine what is going on now in schools. I can talk to my children but when they are, I can go on and on like, oh, Joshua, clear your plate, clear your plate, get your plate. But when they are done, say, Joshua, clear your plate. It's just one. One time, he will just do it. That's the authority a man carries. That's the authority a man carries. A woman brings the nurturing, will bring the comfort. But the men, they instruct. That's the word of God. God said to Abraham, I trust him. That's what God, God was bragging on Abraham. He said, I trust him that he will, he will lead his children to me. That's the word of God. God wants the men to rise up. I'm, I'm, today, I'm glad I could share tonight. Because I've, I've, it's been boiling in me. That the men will rise up. 
the women, they are tired, they are stressed. They're carrying so much burden because you refuse to lead your children in the way of the Lord. There is, there is a statistics out there. If the man of the household, if he's, if he, um, if he's a born again, he can lead 97% to Christ. If it's the woman, 66%. And if it's the child, maybe 8 or 9%. You see how powerful the man is. And so we have to start encouraging the men in our family. I have brothers, I encourage them. Don't just sit down and don't go to church. Your children are looking at you. They learn, not by what you're saying, by the way that you are treating them, by your action. That's how you begin to, to preach to your children. Because they are watching you. Look at what he said. His child went to him. This child went to the father. He said, my head, my head. The father said, carry him to his mother. He did not even pay attention to his children. And that child died. When you don't pay attention to your children, your children dies. What does your child represent? It represents your future, your legacy. This child I'm talking about, it could be anything. If you don't pay attention to your business, it will die. Don't pay attention to your ministry, it will die. This is a blessing that God gave you. Your children, child is a gift. What is that gift that God has given to you? Are you paying attention to the gift? You have the gift of intercession. You don't even intercede for anyone. What gift do you have? You have a gift of worship, a gift of singing. What is your gift? When you don't pay attention to it, it's going to die. It's a gift that God has given to you. And so he said, carry him to his mother. When he had taken him and brought him to his mother, he sat on her knees till noon and then died. And she went up and laid him on the bed of the man of God, shut the door upon him and went out. <laughs> then she called to her husband and said, Please send me one of the young men and one of the donkeys that I may run to the man of God and come back. <laughs> she said, I may run to the man of God and come back. The source of a thing is the sustainers of that thing. If God is your source, God is the one that will sustain you. She recognized the fact that this gift that God has given to me has died. You will see here, she never said he died. So he said, why are you going to him today? It is neither the new moon nor the Sabbath. <laughs> and she said, it is well. <laughs> Say to yourself, it is well. You see that gift that God has given you that looks like it's dying or has died. Don't partner with Satan and say, oh, this gift is dying. Oh, this gift is dead. No. This woman said, it is well. You see, why she said it is well? Because she knows the God that gave her that child. If you know the God that has given you that gift, you will be confident and say, it is well. Because God is too faithful to fail me. I cannot be sick. It is well. I don't care how I'm feeling in my body right now. It is well. I don't care how my business is doing right now. It is well. I don't care how my children are behaving right now. It is well. <laughs> the woman, she made that declaration. And she said, it is well. She didn't even bother her husband. She's, she's I give it to her. <laughs> I will bother my husband. If my child, if actually myself, I'm a drama queen. Right, Hade? 
Why? <laughs> have, I'm a drama queen. If I'm not feeling well, I'll go and bother my husband because I'm not good with medication. You see? And so, and I always say, this is why God gave me a man of God. Because I don't want someone to tell me, go and take Tanano. <clears throat> I'm not that type of person. My faith is not in that. And so I will go to bother my husband. I'll say, please, pray for me. If he doesn't pray for me, I will fight him. Yeah, till he will pray for me. Let alone my children. I'll pray for my children when they are not feeling well. I'll lay them on his hand. I say, oh, pray for your son. He's not feeling well. Because as a woman, you'll see it first anyway. You know, and then I'll say, oh, you need to pray for him. He needs your prayers. When they were going to school first on Wednesday, go and get your father's blessings. That's what I did. Go to your father. Go and get your father's blessings. I know we laid hands on them here now. Thank God. <laughs> get as many blessings as you can because you will need it in future. Not only this meaning. I said, no, first day of school, go. It was, ah, oh, I slept late. Mm-hmm. You need to bless your children before they go. And so, the woman said, it is well. Then in verse 24, then she saddled a donkey and said to her servant, drive and go forward. Do not slacken the pace for me unless I tell you. <laughs> Look at her. Woman, man. You have a problem, run to God. Don't waste time. Don't hesitate. Run to the presence of God. And so she departed and went to the man of God at Mount Carmel. So it was when the man of God saw her afar off that he said to his servant, Look, the Shunammite woman, please run now to meet her and say to her, Is it well with you? Is it well with your husband? Is it well with your child? You see, it was a service that is speaking for her. What she has done, what you sow is what you reap. Genesis 8, 22. As long as the earth remains, there will be seed, time, and harvest time. Because of the way she has honored this man of God, because of the way she has treated the gift of God, the man of God said, eh, 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 I see Rosemary coming. Run, 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 run. <laughs> run to her. Go and ask her. Are you okay? Is everything okay? Is everything okay? And she answered, it is well. <laughs> so now, when she came to the man of God had the hill, she caught him by the feet. But Gehazi came near to push her away. But the man of God said, see these guys. <laughs> Look, guys, when I'm reading the word of God, I, I picture it. Right? Gehazi was the one that spoke for her. So Gehazi kind of know like, oh, what are you doing? Don't touch my, don't touch my man of God. You know, those protocol officers, Pastor Moses doesn't have one. But you know those churches that when the worship is done, that's when the pastors start coming in. They are too big to worship God, you know, and they start coming in. And their protocol officers will be clearing the way for them like, hey, my man of God is coming. <laughs> you know those pastors? <laughs> Don't, don't, no, don't touch them. You see, that was what Gehazi was doing. Gehazi was doing those protocol officers like, don't touch them. Those ones, these ones are bigger than God. Because it just annoys me that you, you, you are a pastor, but you, you don't come in to worship. Like, what's wrong with you? You are a man of God or woman of God, but when worship is going on or the prayers are going on, are we worshiping you? Why, why are you not in service? And they stay in the green room and then they come out when the word is about and they're coming. I don't even want to listen to you. Yeah, because you know, when we, when we are doing worship, right? We are carrying into the throne of God. And so if you don't join us to get to the throne of God, what are you bringing? The one you've downloaded from Hey Hi, the message you've downloaded from sermon.com, 
Is that what you want to give to God's people? That's why I don't want to listen. We all worship. We is a flight. And the worship, when we do worship, it takes us into the presence of God. And then, if you call yourself man of God and you don't come into worship, sir, ma, where is your message coming from? You haven't even gone. We've left you behind. This is why I don't like coming late to worship because it's a flight. When we start worship and you are not here, we've left you behind. Yeah. We should start placing a priority on the presence of God. On saying, I want to be there. I don't, this is my first, seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. Let, let people know, let your business know that I place God first. And so, this is what Gehazi was doing. Gehazi pushed her away like, no, 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 don't touch my man of God's feet. <laughs> and the man of God said, and the man of God said, uh, hold on, guys. Leave her alone. What verse is that? 27. Okay. Now when she came to the man of God at the hill, she caught up. She caught him by the feet, but Gehazi came near to push her away. But the man of God said, let her alone, for her soul ah, is in deep distress. And the Lord has hidden it from me and has not told me. You don't know it all. He recognized the fact that this woman is in deep distress, but the Lord hasn't revealed it to me. This is what I was saying, that we prophesy, we know in parts, and we prophesy in parts. God will not show you everything all the time. You will need someone to help you. You will need someone to go and say, hey, God is showing me half leg. What, have you got the other part? Because sometimes, some people want to run on their own. Like, I know it all. I, want to, I can do it by myself. Mm -hmm. How is it going? <laughs> How is it down there? <laughs> My son, because he's taller than me now, he will say, Mom, how is it down there? How, how is the weather down there? <laughs> you see? And so, in verse 28, so she said, did I ask <laughs> a son of my Lord? Did I not say, don't deceive me? You see, sometimes you look at the gift that God has given to you. Sometimes, you know, it's unbelievable. And when Satan wants to trouble you, Satan will look like, Satan will come with his trouble. Don't partner with him, with your words. Go back to your source. Go back to God that gave you. Because the blessings of God makes rich and he has no sorrow. That's the blessings of God for you. And she said, did I not say I don't want a son? Right? Because some as well, when I was reading this, you know, the woman was like, I said I don't want a son because I, I, I don't want the trouble that comes with a son. And that trouble came on her. Just like Job said, the things I feared the most has come to pass in my life. When you are afraid of some things, it would happen. God said, I have not given you the spirit of fear, but of power, of love, and a sound mind. So every time you're beginning to feel afraid, tell yourself, no, this is not from God. The Lord rebuke you. I have power. I have love. I have sound mind. Because why fear will come, but don't let that fear overpower you. Tell the fear, no, you have no place in me. The fear of rejection, say no. No, God as God loves me regardless of what I have done. God loves me regardless of where I am right now. Why? You have to speak to that fear and it will leave you. Because this woman said, I, I didn't want a son. This is why I didn't want a son. You see, she was already afraid that if she got a son, the son might die. And truly it happened. But somebody said, mercy. 
hey, the mercy of God spoke for her. Then he said to Gehazi, get yourself ready and take my staff in your hand and be on your way. If you meet anyone, do not greet him. And if anyone greets you, do not answer him. But lay my staff on the face of the child. And the mother of the child said, <laughs> as the Lord lives and as your soul lives, I will not leave you. <laughs> So he arose and followed her. The woman said, no, I don't want guys. This one that pushed me away. No, no. Stay there until you get your answer. That's what the word of God says. Ask until your joy is full. Ask until you get your answer. Don't get up and say, oh, why is he showing himself? Oh, he's too proud. Oh, I'm leaving. Every little thing, we get offended. Oh, he didn't pray for me. I'm not coming back. Don't be easily offended. Look what a woman said. <laughs> Prophets, as the Lord lives and as your soul lives, I will not leave you. So he arose and followed her. Now Gehazi went I went on ahead of them and laid the staff on the face of the child. But there was neither voice nor hearing. Therefore, he went back to meet him and told him, saying, the child has not awakened. You see, the woman knew what she was doing. Hmm. When Elisha came into the house, there was the child, there was the child lying dead on his bed. He went in there, Therefore, shut the door behind the two of them and prayed to the Lord. And he went up and lay on the child and put his mouth on his mouth and his eyes on his eyes and his hands on his hands and he stretched himself out on the child and the flesh of the child became warm. He returned and walked back and forth in the house and again went up and stretched himself out on him. Then the child sneezed seven times and the child opened his eyes. <laughs> I want to read that again. There is, a, there is a revelation there and... Alan was sharing with us on Tuesday. I want to read it and see if anyone caught that revelation. In verse 35, he returned and walked back and forth in the house and again up and stretched himself out on him. He went back and forth, back and forth. He was kabashing. When you are praying, don't sit still. This is what we are going to be doing tonight. Those of you who like to just stay still. Tonight, your pastor is not here to rescue you guys. We are going to be going back and forth. Praying. This is what the prophets did. He walked back and forth into the house. Like, okay, this is battle. I'm ready for battle. You see? And what happened? The child sneezed seven times and the child opened his eyes. And he called Gehazi and said, call this Shunammite woman. So he called her and when she came in to him, he said, pick up your son. <laughs> so she went in, fell at his feet and bowed to the ground. Then she picked up her son and went out. This woman is it's admirable woman. She bowed, she bowed, she worshipped God. Like, God, I knew you would do it. I know my know that I know myself that I am not able to raise my child. I said it is well. Is it well with the woman now? Is it well with the child? It is well. So tonight, we are going to be praying. Mali Suturi and Mako Satali the wall. Lift up your voice. We are going to be praying back and forth. Get up on your feet. Tonight we are going to be going back and forth.
Ah, we are going to be going back and forth. You don't forget the altar. If your legs are paining you, this is the time. I say, God, this is the time when you're going back and forth. You are going and you're asking God for strength. You see, if you are not 80 years old, there is nothing wrong with your feet. You just have to ask God, give me strength in my feet. Give me strength. Lord, I praise you tonight. Alika The prophets went back and forth. The prophets went back and forth. Maka Lavadosa. Begin to praise God. Begin to praise Him. You have life. Praise Him. Lift up your voice. Maka Liradusasa. Masetelebako Shatoriana. Manika Lusuturiana. Masetelebo. Eka Lamanosa. Lift up your voice. Begin to praise Him. Begin to worship Him. Worship the King of Kings. Maka Lamadosa. Manika Lusuturiana. Hey, Satalabanosa. Father, we worship you tonight. You are the resurrection and the life. Lord, we exalt you. We glorify you. You are the Alpha and the Omega. The beginning and the end. Maka Labadusa. Hey, Satelabo. Kali Manusasa. Hey, Kalamanosasa. He manika lushuturiana. In the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. I want us to pray and say, Father, give me the sending spirits. Give me the spirits of discernment that I am able to discern the, the ones around me. I am able to discern the needs of the people around me. I will no longer be ignorant. Hey, Father Lord, every spirit of selfishness, hey Kalima Lusuturiana, Father Lord, take it out of us in the mighty name of Jesus. Hey Kalamanos, Sataliana, Nima Lusuturiana, hey Kalamanos, say, He shall tell a Kuriana, hey Mananos, in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. I want us to pray. I want us to pray that every, you know, the woman lost hope. She lost hope. She didn't know that she could have children. She didn't know that she could have a son. Wherever you have lost hope, just because the, the, the promises are not coming to pass, I want you to begin to pray to God and say, Father, give me hope. Give me hope, Father, restore my hope. Where I have been hopeless, the things I have forgotten, the dreams that God has given to you and you have forgotten about it, you think that can never happen. I want you to pray tonight because the Lord said he is too faithful to fail. Maka libadu sasa. Hey, satalamano sasa. He manika lu shusuriana. Begin to walk back and forth. Back and forth. Mane satalabaku sasa. Hey, manika lu shusuriana. Ma satalabo. Father Lord, restore our hope. Restore our hope. In the mighty name of Jesus. Hey, kalu shusuriana. Ma satalabaku. Kali Malu Suturiana in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. I want us to pray. Every prophecy that has been spoken to you, that prophecy came to pass in that woman's life. Say, Father, every prophecy that has been spoken over me, over my husband, over my children, over this ministry, Father, we will begin to see the manifestation in the name of Jesus. This is our season of manifestation. Every prophecy that has been spoken over us, we wage war tonight. We wage war. Paul said, to Timothy, wage war against your prophecy. Wage war, Maka Lamano Sasa, Limanu Suturiana, Hey Satala Kushato, Hey Kalamano Sasa, Himane Satele Kuriana. Every prophecy concerning me, the Lord said, I am the head and not the tail. It is coming to pass in the name of Jesus. Maka Liana Lu Sasa, Hey Kalamano Satelebo, Asitale Kushatoriana, Himane Satele. Father, we give you praise. Lord, we exalt you. I want us to pray. Pray for any man that you know. This is the time. Pray for your baby daddies. Pray for any man that you know. 
pray for any husband that you know, begin to pray for them that they will not neglect the role that God has called them. They will not neglect what God has called them to do. My Lord, Satanianda, Father Lord, we pray for the men. Every man on here, we use them as a point of contact. That they will be the priests of the household that you have called them to be. In the mighty name of Jesus, Father, they will not neglect their role. Their children will not die. Maka, Lavadu, Sasa, everything that you have committed into the hands of the men it will not die in the mighty name of Jesus for the Lord we pray for the men we wage war tonight in the name of Jesus Father that the men will arise that we arise every distraction everything that is distracting them we come against them tonight we come against them tonight my Lord we come against them tonight Hey, Kalamano, Sasa, hey, Kalimanu, Susurianda, hey, Kalamani, Shesene, Kurianda, he Manu, Susurianda, hey, Satalabado, Father Lord, we pray for the men, Lord, every man in my life, I pray, oh God, Makalabado, Sasa, hey, Manika Lusu, Father Lord, then we arise, as they arise, the Lord will equip them, the Lord will equip them for the work that He has commanded them to do in the mighty name of Jesus. Hey, Kalima no Susurianda. Hey, Satalabanosha. Kalima no Susurianda. Hey, Satalamani Sasa. In the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. I want us to pray that the resurrection power will work in our life. That child was dead. But as the man of God went back and forth, the child came to life. I want us to pray. Anything that has died in your life, anything that is dying, I want us to pray and begin to speak that the resurrection power, the resurrection power, the resurrection power, it will work for us in the name of Jesus. The resurrection power, it will work for us in the mighty name of Jesus. Makalabadosha, manika libadusa sale kurianda, imana se sele koshasa, e manika lushu surianda. Father, we thank you. Lord, we give you praise. Lord, we exalt you. Father, we glorify you in the mighty name of Jesus. The resurrection power, it will work for us in our health, in our life, in our business, in our ministry. In our family, in our children. None of our children will die. Our children will not die. Our business will not die. Our ministry will not die. Maka lakalosasa. Imani Hello, Susu. Hey, manana no, Sasa. Oh, Father, we give you praise. Oh, we give you praise. We give you praise. Hey, Kasasa, the Korianda Lushasa. Masetelebo, Korianda Lashasa. Hey, Kelebo, Ho, Sasali, Anda. Limanu, Susurianda. Hey, Kalimanu, Sasa. In the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Oh, Father, we give you praise. Oh, Lord, we give you praise. Oh, Lord, we give you praise. I want us to pray for our children. I want us to pray for our children and none of our children will die. I want to decree that our children will fulfill destiny. I want you to begin to pre- to begin to plead the blood of Jesus over our children. That the Lord will satisfy them with long life. In the mighty name of Jesus. The Lord will satisfy them with long life. In the mighty name of Jesus. Makala Sasa. Malika Lushusurianda. Say Salamano Sasa. Hey Kalibadu Shusurianda. Hey Kalamano. Father, we give you praise. Lord, we exalt you. Thank you, Heavenly Father, for tonight. Thank you for your word. Thank you for your transforming word. Lord, tonight, you said we will testify. You said we will testify. In the name of Jesus. 
finally, I want you to pray for yourself. What is that thing that God has given to you and it looks like it's dying? What is that thing that God has blessed you with and is dead? Some is dead, some is dying. What is that thing I want you to bring it before the Lord tonight? Is it your marriage and you think it's dying? I want you to bring it before the Lord. Is it your business? Is it your ministry? Whatever it is, or your children, whatever it is, you are every day you're going to bed and you are afraid for your children. And you say, My children are not in the Lord. What if they die? They're gonna go to hell. I want you to bring those children before the Lord tonight and say, It is well, and begin to speak life into your children's life, begin to speak life into your life, begin to go back. Like the prophet did, begin to go back and forth. Like the prophet did, my marriage will not die, my children will not die. Hey, Kalamano, Sasalian, Zimane, Kelebo, Kusasa, Himani, Shatale, Kuriana, Massezelebo, Kalibadu, Sasa, Hey, Kalamano, Sasalebo, Zisa, Labano, Shisa, Father Lord, every need that has been brought to you tonight. Father Lord, there will be testimony. Every need that has been brought tonight, there will be testimony. Hey, Hey, Father, we give you praise. Lord, we exalt you. Ah, hey, kala kala manasata, hey, malisha tale kuriana. I want you to lift the hands and praise God. I want you to praise Him. The Lord is here. I want you to praise Him. Hey, kalima na isetele bako sata, mani malu suturiana. Hey, Lord, we praise you. Father, we exalt you. Hmm. Yes, Father. Thank you because you are faithful. Thank you for your love. Thank you for your goodness. Thank you for your mercy. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen. Oh God, I want you to jump up like you have your answer. I want you to praise him like you have your answer. He happened right before his very eyes. I want you to jump on your feet. Praise the Lord. Praise him. Praise God. Hey, Kalemosasa. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name. Amen. You may take your seat. You see, when we pray, you see, prayer in the life of a believer, there are so many reasons why we pray. It's a channel of fellowship and transformation. When you pray, it's a channel of, you know, you fellowship with God. But when you come to church, is a time to make petitions. Thank you. It's the time that you make your petitions known before God. In, in Mark 11, let's read Mark 11. Mark 11, 24. The presence of God is so strong. I don't want us to miss out on here. And the presence of God is fullness of joy. You can come, you cannot come into the presence of God and leave the same. Whenever we're coming into the presence of God, we come here with expectation. I don't come like I'm a pastor's wife. No, I come as a child of God into his presence with expectation. Sometimes when you see my husband pray for me, I 
I came with expectation like, Lord, I want to be prayed for tonight. He doesn't even know. But I talked to my Heavenly Father that this is why I'm coming today. I'm going to be a blessing, but guess what, Lord? I want to be blessed. I want to leave us Mark 11. Mark 11, 24. Oh, thank you. <laughs> so, oops, oops. <laughs> thank you, sis. Mark eleven twenty four. Therefore I say to you, whatever things you ask, when you pray, believe that you receive them, and you will have them. Hmm. Uh, did you catch that? He said, whatever things you ask when you pray, believe that you receive them and you will have them. I pray that we will all come back to testify as we break bread, 1 John 4, 17. Love has been perfected among us in these, that we may have boldness in the day of judgment, because as it is, so are we in this world. This is what makes us, when we have accepted Jesus as our Lord and Savior, this blood uh, makes us, as Jesus is, so are we. Every petition that we have made, don't let it stop here. As you take this, Take it in remembrance. As he is, so are you. As he is, whenever Jesus went everywhere, he went about doing good. As he is, so are you. Whenever Jesus casted um, demons out, they went out. You have the same authority and you have the same power within you. You're not going to be silent, are you? You see, that woman wasn't silent. The Shunammite woman, she opened the mouth. She said, it is well. So as we take this body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, we take it in remembrance that as Jesus is, so are we. He didn't say as Jesus was. No, he says as he is, so are we. Present, so are we in the name of Jesus as we go about. Father, we pray. As the eyes of the disciples were opened on, on your way to Emmaus, let our eyes be opened as we go tonight, as we take this communion. Lord, we receive the boldness that we need to invite people into the kingdom of God. We receive the boldness to make judgment over any situation that is not in alignment with the word of God in our life. As he is, so are we. In the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. You may take the body and the blood of Jesus. All right, thank you everyone. I hope you have been blessed today. Amen. Come on, let's celebrate the woman of God. What a night tonight. God is good. Y'all got to know when y'all see the woman of God coming before the altar that the Lord got your number called because sometimes you just need a prophetic exercise. You see, I don't know about you, but every time this woman of God comes up, I, I leave fired up. You see? And we just know that that is the grace that is upon her life. What a messenger of the Most High God. God is good. Let us uh, press on in giving tonight. You'll see the giving details there on the screen. And as we're preparing our offerings, if you need an envelope, it's right here to the left of my dear brother, Kenyatta. As we're preparing that, you know, the woman of God shared with us the book of Mark, chapter 11, verse 24. 
whatever we ask the Lord for in prayer, believe that we have received it, and it shall be ours. You know, sometimes we just need help with timing because when we ask the Lord something, it comes with a condition of the time frame that we want to see it in. You see, and when it isn't quite carried out in the time frame that you want it to, it's just an opportunity for you to check yourself and allow the Lord to do because the word declares that it's impossible to please him except by faith. If you know you are pressing into the things of God concerning whatever it is that he's promised you, whatever is relevant to that season, release it unto him and allow him to bring to you the peace that surpasses all understanding because we know that the word declares that he makes everything beautiful in his time. With that being said, my prayer for us tonight as we give offering is that even as we pressed into prayer tonight, that the Lord, by his mercy, because how many know he's here? How many know? All right? I believe by faith that this is a gesture that as the woman of God said, provoked the Lord. And what my ask of the Lord tonight is, is that he grant unto each and every one of us a glimpse into heaven's timetable so that we can see just to press into the expectation even more because the Lord is merciful. He's our good father. He's our daddy. And so my ask is, Lord, let me see a glimpse of that timetable because you know sometimes the prophetic word will come and we'll get that day by day, but sometimes we know those things may be afar off. Either way, for this season, as we know we're shifting gears that the Lord grant unto us even as we sleep, an insight into the calendar of heaven. Hallelujah. Father, we give you praise. Hallelujah. Lord, there's none like you. You are the head of days. Your word declares that your throne is forever. You are the eternal God. You are the God of angel armies. Who are we that you are mindful of us? The son of men that you would visit us. Father, for you have chosen for your own pleasure to visit with us again. Tonight, oh God, you have ministered through your ministering spirit, this messenger, this mighty woman of God, this flame of fire. Oh God, and as she has poured out, Lord, from your eternal cup, let her be poured into tonight. Let deep, truly, call unto deep tonight. Father, let virtues flow from heaven into her that she may continue the good work that is the ministry of the gospel, giving herself over continually to prayer and to the ministration of the word. Father, we thank you for the man of God over this house. For truly, O oh God, you have sent these messengers, O oh God, in the spirit that you have placed upon him. And Father, we thank you for the gifting of prophecy in this house. The wind of the prophetic, O oh God, as you have ministered to us, O oh God, as you have revealed mysteries unto us, insights through your word, through the Shunammite woman, O oh God, through Elisha, through Gehazi, through these ones that you set before us because you saw this moment gleaning, O oh God, peeking into what your word has in store. We thank you for your mercy. Let these offerings before your God be found pleasing in your sight. Let them be sweet smelling unto you. And help us, O oh God, to be in that posture of provoking you, O oh God, to encounter you. Let every gesture of our lives, of our spirit, be sweet smelling to you. Let them be fragrant to you, O oh God. Every fiber of our being, let it give praise unto you continually. For even as your word declares that your praise shall continually be on our lips. We declare that all glory and honor belong to you. And we all said, 
Amen. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Let's celebrate the Lord. Let's go home expectant tonight. Fellas, we've been put on blast. You already know what time it is. We got to get our guys in. It's something I'm not going to go in detail. My wife and I were just talking about earlier because you don't know they wife might be in here. Hello, somebody. Y'all not. Okay. Y'all don't want to go there. Y'all don't want to go. Y'all don't want to do that. You see, because we're here to be a representation of the God here. You understand? So I know I found my wife in the church house because somebody was praying. You see what I'm saying? And the Lord took us to the next level. What did the woman of God declare? Just three months here. Just sit your behind down and get in the word. Year after year, my wife and I have been taken to the next level in our spirit deep down, okay? Because it has to happen there first before you begin to see the outward manifestation, those things that you know the Lord has promised you, okay? God is good. So, fellas, we've been charged up. Let's make that effort. Send that brother that text, that phone call, like, hey, bro, we got something going on Tuesday. You know, in uh, August, is actually a jam-packed month for us. We, by the grace of God, going to have golf coming up, fellas. Let's be excited. Okay, men's Monday, this upcoming Monday, as well as breakfast. And if you haven't seen yet in the chat, the men's conference. I want to share those details with you. Forgot about it. Charles, I don't know if we talked about that just yet, but let's circle back on that. We have been invited there, but we'll share the details as they come. All righty? God is good. Everyone have a blessed night.